All right, let's see if we can address the question of finding the middle 95%. Now, when you don't, when it doesn't jump out at you to how to address a question, I really encourage you to follow the steps that I've recommended. So in this case, I've given you a percent and I'm asking you for a score, which means that your first step is to draw it. This is where most of your effort should be. If you draw it appropriately to begin with, it goes much easier later on. Then what we're going to do, because it's the percent to score, we're going to look up something in the table. And then our last step is once we've looked up the thing in the table, we're going to use that to calculate it into our equation. So now let's go ahead and um, draw and see if we can make this an appropriate picture. So if I draw my distribution, now remember my mu is 100 and my standard deviation is 15. So if I set my 100 in the middle and I go up in increments of the standard deviation. Now, to draw the middle 95%, I actually don't necessarily need to go and use these increments. However, it really does orient you and I encourage you to do it because you will rarely get the question wrong if you've done this appropriately. So I'm going up and down in increments of the standard deviation. If you're not sure how to do this, reach out to me. While we're here, let's go ahead and establish what we always know. We know that this is 34% to the distribution. This area is 14% and this is two. This area is 34, 14, two. Oops, that's supposed to be a two. Okay. So we're trying to draw the middle 95%. Before we can do that, let's try to figure out where what we do know. Maybe in um, yellow, I'll highlight. If I take 34 plus 14 plus 34 plus 14, that ends up being this area here, and that's the middle 96%. So that's really close to what we want. So I want you to notice that the middle 96% is 14, 34, 34, 14. Another way we could have figured it out is we could have said 100 minus the 2% here, minus the 2% here. And that would tell us that this middle is the middle 96%. So now we know where the 96 is. Let's see if we can accurately put the middle 95% in there. So if we realize that these black lines are the 96 marker, then we know it's just shy of that line and just shy of this line. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but you want to kind of place it as best you can. And we now, this is the middle 95%. So this is the drawing it stage, okay? So what's really important is that we already know that whatever score we are looking for is going to be just shy of the 130 and just a little bit above 60. So our score is going to be 60 something um, to 120 something. That's a good way to orient us. All right, so now let's figure out how we're going to answer this question. Our next step is to look it up. And we want to know what to look up. If you thought, I know, I'll look up 95%, well, if you look up 95%, you'll find you can't do that. And that's because our table only gives us half the distribution. So 95% is flanking that half. So it's you're not going to be able to look up 95%. So we have to figure out what we can look up in that table. So there's two things we can look up. I'm going to start with the one that might speak to most students first. If we know that this distribution is 100% and we're looking in the middle 95%, that leaves us left over with 5% uh, not included in the region we're looking at. Now, because it's in the middle, that 5% is evenly split. So just knowing this piece tells me that this area up here is two and a half percent, otherwise half of that five percent, and this area down here is two and a half percent. So that's actually not the area I want. This is exactly the opposite of the area I want, but it can still tell me where I am. And so I can look up in the C column, I can look up 0.025 in the C column, and that will tell me what z-score I need for my formula. Another way to do this, and I'll put this in purple, is to think about what would be in the B column. So the B column is going to be 
in the middle here. Now notice I didn't say in the middle here because that's not what the B column is. The B column is just half the distribution. So the B column is going to tell me what's from this red line to the middle. So what we can think about is that we know from this marker to this marker is 95%. So half of 95%, if I divide it in half, this side is going to be 47.5, and this side is going to be 47.5. So that's 95 divided by 2. So I have 47.5 plus 47.5 equals the total of the middle 95%. So that means in the B column, I can look up 0.475, and that will tell me what z-score I need for my equation. Now here's something cool is these two z-scores will be the same because this table is just telling you where this line is. And so it's either going to be associated with 2.5% up here or 47.5% down here. They're just marking the same line. So once we know where this line is on the z-score, we can plug it into our equation. So we would take our equation, which is x equals mu plus the standard deviation times your z-score. Once you figure out what that z-score is, you plug everything you need into this equation, and that will tell you what score is right here. Now remember, if you're trying to find the score down here, it's going to be the same z-score because it's the 2.5% and the 47.5%. It's just going to be a negative z-score, whereas this one's a positive z-score. So you do the same exact formula except this time it's going to be 100 plus 15 times a negative z-score. And that will help you get to the answer of the lower score um, associated with the middle 95% and the upper score associated with the middle 95%. And when you're figuring that out, remember, we said it was going to be 60-something to 120-something. So just keep that in mind to check yourself. Um, if we draw it appropriately, it'll make, a, it'll make it easier for us to, to get that answer.